Hello, I'm Luther with the Big Blue Sun Museum of Solar Cooking in Minneapolis. Uh, I'm here with Roger Haynes of the Haynes Cooker fame, a uh, panel cooker that is just, it's astounding. It's uh, it, uh, the panel cooker I use every time I need to do a bulk amount of food and I got all day to do it. It's just so reliable uh, and I'm glad to be here with Roger in Southern California. A rare day with a little bit of clouds, but it's also a little cooler, so happy for that. And uh, so I just have a few questions that I'd like to kind of for the sake of the history of solar cooking throughout the ages and uh, help with the Solar Cookers International Wiki. Um, uh, this cooker is on, uh, I've seen it on Amazon, it's on eBay. Uh, people that get it, this is one of their go-to cookers. Well, how did you come up with the idea? What First off, how did you find out about solar cooking? For, so, for strangely, not through any of the wikis, not any of that stuff. I just decided about six years ago, I had a friend in Uganda who needed a job, and I said, why don't we come up with a product that I can buy in the U.S., I'll ship it to you, you sell it at profit in Uganda, and make money. I uh, looked around, and I said, how about solar cookers? Those look pretty neat. And I had not discovered SCI or anybody at that point. Um, so then I started looking around. Uh, and then I discovered the wiki. That's how my first introduction to all of this. Looked at all the models. Loved the umbrella model. Um, uh, and the, uh, yeah, and, and so I said, you know, these are great, but I don't think they're as good as they ought to be. I bet I can do better. I'm a lawyer, so, you know, we lawyers think we can do anything. So, and I had done a science project in fifth grade on solar, solar uh, energy, and so I thought I knew what I was doing. So I spent now six years trying to come up with a better design. And uh, in the meantime, of course, my friend has moved on to other things. He doesn't care about this at all anymore. Uh, but I've spent about six or seven different designs finally coming up with this latest design over that period of time. Sure. Well, and, uh, this is the 2.0. Yes. There was a 1.0. Was there a beta before that even? Oh, yeah. There were a couple of betas. <laughs> alpha, beta. alpha, and gamma. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, those, you just... You worked it until you realized maybe there's a couple of tweaks and there's yeah there's always something wrong with designs. I can tell you there's things wrong with this design. <laughs> so it'll, it's uh, there's always an opportunity to get better. Sure. Well, and the choices here. How about with the snaps? When did that come about? That was a, a slow process. I thought, how in the world can I connect these things? I used Velcro at first. Then I thought of, of taping them together so they would just fold on the tape and whatnot. I spent years actually working on various kinds of connectors until I finally decided, even though these are hard to put in, the snaps are, are labor intensive, this is what works, they stay. Uh, I've had people, they're a little hard to get apart, hard to put together, but, and people tell me, you know, I'm worried I'll tear it or whatever, but I've, I've ripped this apart many, many times, I have not yet ripped out a snap. So. Yeah, that was my first worry, and uh, yeah. I don't worry about it anymore. I mean, I, I, you yeah. look at it to see is it is it going to move or anything, and it, it looks like it's still firm. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and uh, Sharon Clausen has, has gone to the snap. Yeah, she too with her her version. So it's obviously a reliable thing, and the color coding, so you can't get it wrong for the for the low sun, high sun, and so forth. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned, if uh, if Joe needs beans for supper, the, it goes. It's a cup and a half, two cups of beans, and how much water I dare. And it's just this is and what's amazing is it's a rolling boil across the whole top. Like when you do put a pair of put a pot in a parabolic, you get the one corner where it's just just you know urgent, you know, and the rest is like, you know, what's going on here? Yeah. And it boils fine, but uh, but this is so even. And uh, it impressed me the first time I saw it, I realized, well, you're you're basically kind of a parabolic here. It just happens to be a parabolic with a with uh, segments with a that was the idea segments. to create a panel cooker yeah. that's a really a parabolic cooker. Yeah. Um, and I should say, I, I'm a, I was uh, inspired by the Parvati cooker. Oh, yes. The, the double angle Parvati cooker. There's a lot of talk about double angles. How do you make a double angle cooker? And that's what this is. It's double angle. Yep. And that's what the white snaps do. They, they produce a double angle. And without the double angle, you're just creating one single uh, large cooker if you try to do that. And it doesn't get any hotter, even though it's big. Yep. So you need the double angle. And that's what this does. And now the polycarbonate sleeve. 
How did you come up with that? Well, it's, let me show that over here sure. because you can't see it very well there. But I was very frustrated by the plastic bag of the cook -It. I know everybody hates those. I hated them. You get the thing all heated up and then you're trying to get it off and the steam is burning you and it's falling, it's slipping all over the pot. So I said, there's got to be a better way. That's why people aren't adopting this. That was my conviction. So I said, why not a polycarbonate sleeve like this that just covers the bottom of the pan, uh, not the lid, and then if you put a glass lid on it, glass is a very good insulator, so you've essentially got insulation all over the pan, and you've accomplished it without having to have that awful plastic bag over the pot. Sure. So, and this will work with anybody else's cooker. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, it's, it's, give it away. <laughs> anybody can use this. So. I have. I have actually. Okay. I've actually used a smaller pot in the in the heat. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, well, and then I like the idea of the glass lid just for the sake of. I want to see my food. Um, the, my big beef with the with the tube cookers is you can't see the food, yeah. and especially when that's such a high heat, you know, until you smell the char, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> yeah. you don't know if it's yeah. if it's burning. Yeah. Um, but uh, and then the and then the pot that's that's somewhere out there that you found that seemed to be a good fit for this or how did you come up? With I that? I've experimented with a great many pots. I have a whole room <laughs> over here full of pots that oh, I've experimented with. <laughs> um, and I, I I frankly I decided early on that I needed to sell it with a pot mm -hmm. because so many people are frustrated when they buy a cooker and then they had, you're told oh you need a black pot well where are you going to find a black pot it's hard and I've even had people write back to me and say your cooker doesn't work at all and I ask what did you what, what pot did you have? And they'll say, oh, it was a white porcelain pot. <laughs> yeah. Well, that reflects all the yeah. Yeah. So you really need to sell these with pots, and I'm surprised more people don't do it. Sure. Well, and then the extra layer, uh, how did you come up with that? Because you, it was a, that, that's, that's that circular cover yeah. right here. So again, showing it, showing it here. I said, why don't we, you know, there needs to be some kind of a windscreen if it's windy. And so why don't we come up with something? Also, my earlier designs, I had trouble creating a sort of parabolic shape to them. And I found that if you put a circular cover in them, they will they will push the cooker into the parabolic shape. So my earlier designs really did need this. This doesn't need it as much. But it, it really does uh, help to retain the heat in there, act as a windscreen. But I'm, what I'm finding is the tests show that just the fact that light goes through the plastic Mm -hmm. It bounces back against the plastic. It doesn't get back out. Yeah. It's a different. It changes the, the, the uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the infrared or the infrared, ultraviolet. Yeah. I never get yeah. them straight. There we yeah. go. <laughs> uh, so it's very helpful to have this, even though, as you can see, there's a considerable gap around the edges. So so it doesn't really provide a clear insulation, but it nevertheless is a great help to retain the heat. Yeah. So the windscreen and then maintaining the shape, uh, that, and now the third thing, I just noticed with this, this must be a recent one, and it's an improvement because the Velcro, it gets hot enough where it just, it, it unglues. Yeah. You know, and so I'm glad, this is really great, I, I didn't know this was even there now, so this is great. I struggled for years trying to get better adhesive <laughs> for Velcro and you just can't get no, it. No, no. It doesn't work. No. When you're, you're, you're dealing with energy, it's going to, it's going to take care of it. Yeah. So it's basically you have a, an extra slot at the bottom and the top, yeah. and it's it's about where the Velcro was before anyway. Yeah. And now and then you don't have the Velcro there, so you get to, you know, another square inch of reflectivity. Okay, maybe that doesn't <laughs> seem like much, but yeah. you know every little bit uh, yeah. can sure help. Well, it's just an amazing cooker, and uh, like I say, for for the bulk, and I haven't, I, I'm going to someday try to bake right in it in the whole nine yards. I do that with cookers. My trouble is with I'm approaching 70 cookers now with my collection, so <laughs> getting to be able to use each one, uh, yeah. it's a challenge. Yeah. But, but yeah. wonderful. That's so great. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of anything more you want to say about it because it's, uh, I mean, it's just so great. Well, it's been very successful mm -hmm. on Amazon. As I mentioned to you earlier, we're, so, we're probably going to sell six figures this year, sure. and it's profitable. We've let it grow organically. Uh, people are buying it because they see my video on the uh, YouTube. Uh, we've had, had to do hardly any advertising. I've actually sold out. I was sold out this summer for two weeks. Oh, my goodness. But uh, it's just hard to keep the supply chain going. Yeah. But uh, we'll sell two or 3,000 cookers this year, and I wow. think it's going to take off. We now have cookers in the Philippines, in Mexico, in Haiti, in Uganda, and in Kenya. Wow. Wow. Now, do you sell them by the like the pallet, like some of these organizations try to do, or is it the people get these are, time? Again, they're organic in each of these countries. The, the most successful is Mexico, where we have an entrepreneur who's been selling these things for a couple of years down there, and she's just selling a few at a time. 
I'm just about to get her onto Amazon, and I think she'll sell very well because she's having trouble in this COVID time okay. selling. So I think Amazon is the way to go. I think people, in spite of the fact that we want to get these into poor people in, in developing countries, the real market in those countries, the initial market, I think, is still people that can afford to buy them or buy them at a reasonable price. Sure. And so once those people have them, I think they'll get them, and then they'll. In, in Uganda and Kenya, particularly, everybody comes from a village. So the people in Nairobi who are going to buy these are going to buy them for their grandparents or their parents in the village, and that's how we get them into the village society. Okay, that actually was my last question: is the best practices for getting to, to promote it, getting in the hands of people, and the retention is a big thing. You know, are let's, they actually going to keep using it? Let's talk about that. Sure. Uh, from the beginning of this, I said to myself, "This is crazy to have people say, as this." common wisdom on the on the SCI site, on the wiki, that you can't just sell a cooker to somebody. You've got to provide training for them, maybe a week even. And that seems to me crazy. I think the reason why people have not adopted these cookers is they're not good enough. The, uh, the cook it particularly, you can't leave it out in the rain. You have to use that terrible bag. People wind up finding the bag useful to store things in, so they don't really have it for the pot. If they do use it, it wears out very quickly, and then you can't get more pot, more uh, more bags. So I think our problem is not so much training people. People are smart enough to use these. I think we need better cookers, and that's what I try to do with this one. Sure. Well, in the cook it long history, uh, it was a a good thing to get kind of the prime the pump, right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, there's a there's probably a hundred like it. Uh, David Oxford sent me one called the Rollins. A guy named Rollins came up with apparently semi independently almost the exact same shape as the cook it, but it's actually made out of uh, flute board. It's yeah. not this, but flute board about this, about two mil, so it's uh, very flexible, and it's curved rather than the segments like the like the cook it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, whatever material he has, it's at least as, uh, looks as reflective as this. Um, and that, so that too, and he's since passed away, and uh, Dave said he wanted for your collection, of course, you know, <laughs> so he took it to me. Um, but so everyone kind of bombed onto the cook it and said, let's try this. And some kind of stuck more or less with it. Yeah. And some moved uh, forward to uh, to expand the, its, the capabilities of a panel, simple panel cooker. Uh, this is fantastic. Are you aware of retention where your cookers are being sold? or be the? You know, it's a funny thing about that because I keep changing the design. Yeah. And so I'll distribute a bunch. And then by the time I'm ready to do the evaluations and whatnot and pay for it, I say, you know what? I didn't like that design. <laughs> yeah. Even if they came back and said they loved it, I'm not going to use that design. So it's been really a problem and throughout the world. We have problems getting a good evaluation of these things. Okay. This one I'm sticking with. We'll get some good evaluations of it. We'll make some independent evaluations and sure. see how it turns out. Well, and it's not, you're not charging an arm and a leg for this. I mean, if you're talking six figures already this year, yeah. I mean, uh, it's that's... A, it's $100 on Amazon. Yeah. So. And that's yeah. with the pot, or that's uh, that's with the pot. That's with the it's, pot. It's, it's, it's a complete, it's a complete package. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, I actually uh, visited Solar Oven Partners, uh, which is a it's a project of the Methodist Church, um, and they uh, they're in the Dominican Republic, and I forget the nation in Africa, and then the Navajo Nation, yeah. where they'll ship pallets of their it's a box cooker with a flute board outside, and then uh, polyiso cyanurate, real high uh, close cell foam. And then the inside with the aluminum flash and all pre-cut, so you can do like 500 on a pallet where they yeah. ship it. And then they have a they have a two-day training where you get the cooker after the training. Yeah. And they're in the process. They're telling me of, of wrapping up their own uh, study of the adoption rates. You know, are people still using them later on? Uh, they feel that they have a pretty good uh, model because it isn't a week. It isn't you know really high tech. Uh, and when they whenever they've done the training, maybe it might be three months later. A lot of people will come when they ask where to hear about. Well, the other person who got one three months ago when they came to the training. So the, the word of mouth uh, really helps. Uh, but very labor intensive. Uh, all volunteer, uh, and they charge. Uh, you, basically, if you pay for a cooker to get shipped, and it's on it's on the order of a couple hundred dollars. Oh. Uh, so it's yeah, it's already pretty uh, stiff. Uh, but it's all it's all donations and volunteers. So it's no you know. Uh, yeah. They, and individuals. I mean, it's. I think there's probably maybe a part of the church has some kind of uh, fundraising too, but uh, it's, it speaks to the difficulty that they they feel they have to have that training and make sure people really stick with it, um, and they feel it's good. I can't wait to hear the results because maybe it'll be disappointing. Maybe it'll be gangbusters. Yeah. And 
we won't know <laughs> until the numbers are in, so to speak. Yep. So, well, uh, education, that kind of fits in with that, but just in general, uh, what do you, how do you participate? Like with the wiki or the Facebook or what? Yeah, I'm on the, definitely on the wiki and Facebook. Um, speaking of education, we're, we're doing a project, or we hope to be doing a project in Uganda with uh, Mary Sure. Um, and uh, that's, that's high, school. high school students in Uganda and in the U.S. both learning solar cooking, using this solar cooker uh, as a way of teaching science and uh, helping to people get more adoption of solar cooking. Sure. And, and Mary and, uh, and Jennifer Gasser, yes. they put, put together kind of a curriculum, if I understand it right, for like high school and college uh, science? It may be aimed at high school, I think, but okay. junior college. Sure. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I think that's, that's one of the tickets is... I mean, everyone talks about oh, and the Boy Scouts—they made the they made the Pringles can cooker, or they made the you know, and uh, and if it was a day like today, you know, kids are going away, going, what was that all about? You know, yeah, right. so, <laughs> well, but you know, it it it, it, it uh, reached rewards later on because yes. fifth grade, I did solar cooking. They're going to remember they yep. had something to do with solar. They'll never remember. Yep. In fact, yesterday I was uh, with um, Gordy Bishop in Barstow. Yeah. And the, the son of a fellow who already worked with in the solar heating industry for years uh, was there to help him cook. And I said, well, how did you get involved? And, and he was, because he knew his way around it was a sole source parabolic and the two cookers. I mean, he was the chef Yeah. And this guy. And I thought he was in college. He's 17 years old. He just bought his own Indian motorcycle. But it, he says, well, I got started because in high school they had a competition for who could build the best solar cooker. And he won it. He got seventy bucks. Yep. Well, so there you go. You know, I wish there was more of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a little more incentive to, to learn it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can't think of anything else. Anything else you want to share? Or? I'm fine. Thank you so much yeah. for coming. I really appreciate this. No, this, this is great. Uh, I always come, like come back to California. My uh, uh, dad's sisters and their his parents moved to Vista back in the early '60s, and every other year we would camp out all the way over here. And I remember coming here and smelling. Oh man, that must be the ocean. You know, we're about maybe 50 miles outside of L.A., all the way down here. No, it was smog. But, hey, you know, <laughs> I still that smell. Oh, California, I can't wait to get back. <laughs> Thank you. This is, uh, you know, taking a little time out of your day and a uh, very successful uh, model. I think uh, people can really learn from this. I think uh, a, a lot of the people on the Facebooks have figured out that uh, panel cooker, the, the more you can approach that parabola, the better. Uh, lift that pot off so you get the, the light bouncing underneath. Uh, one thing I learned from uh, Paul uh, Hedrick, it was uh, uh, Tom Spondheim and Paul in Seattle. Yeah. The the cookers that have the have the clamshell Pyrex bowls, uh, those seem to do well because if you have like like the flat, uh, oh, like I have the sun dish where it's the flat, um, it's not Pyrex. It's I think it's just a thick polycarbonate. Um, if they're flat, then you're getting all sorts of angles where the sun's going to bounce off. The light's going to bounce off. Yeah. So you're you're doing well here by having that curved uh, bowler because it's going to come in and it's way less likely to bounce off of it on, on the outside. It's just going to be routine. Yeah, mm -hmm. just say, let me say a word about the, sure. the clamshell glass. I keep seeing people online saying, look what I discovered. Look at this. It really <laughs> yes, works yes. terrifically well. And it does. It's wonderful, except that it's really heavy glass. Heavy. So very heavy to ship. Yep. Very dangerous to ship. Very dangerous for people to own yep. the top line clamshell when it's hot, can slip off, and you know. Uh, and I'm thinking, why would you do that when you have this fine yep. item right here to use instead of sure. that clamshell? Please take a look yep. at this. Pennies versus yes. dollars for the, for yeah. the expense. Yeah, pennies for dollars yeah. and no expense to ship it. Sure. Well, and I think that that speaks to like Alain in in France, where uh, he said, "I want to promote it to people who will buy it." And that happens to be the people that have the money to buy it because right. it's a pretty it can be pricey to build yeah. um and so i'll get a cooker knowing i can do that clamshell thing because i can afford it and i already have them so yeah. Yeah. well great well we will cap it off at that thanks again thank you